Now I would like to invite Ms. Yu to present souvenirs to the presenters and authors. Dr. Yix. Thank you, Dr. Yeeks. Ms. Han, please. Thank you, Ms. Han. Ms. Foster, please. Thank you, Ms. Foster. Dr. Evans, please. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Ms. Kaplan, please. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Ms. Wong, please. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Ms. Phillips, please. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Ms. Pion K, please. All presenters and authors, please take a group photo. The conference has nearly come to an end. Now it's time for the closing section. May I invite Mr. Stephen O'Connor to do the final roundup of the conference. Mr. O'Connor is the Director of Information Exponentials in Australia, Editor of Library Management, and Adjunct Professor of School of Information St Studies at Charles Sturt University. Mr. O'Connor, please. Um, I have... Uh two tasks this afternoon. One is to, um, to actually give out a copy of this book which uh, Facet have made available. <coughs> and there are business cards, there are hundreds of business cards in here to be chosen from. And I'll just ask Diana whether she could just select one of them without looking at them. <laughs> And thank you. 
And I just ask the successful um, person to come up after the session rather than um, at straight away. Now, as they say, oh well, Victoria Kaplan, she won. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought that we were okay. going to do this afterwards. Yeah, okay. then you won't. We'll do it now. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Now, to get on to more serious things, I just am very grateful for the um, opportunity uh, to uh, complete this conference. It's a great honour. Um, the, the conference itself, um, it's a very difficult task I've been asked to do and so I do it with great humility and uh, incompetence probably. But the, the papers were excellent and you know, from an editor's point of view as a, the editor of library management, I'm very pleased with the, the quality of the papers. As the um, convener of uh, AL2, um, which was, I thought, a, a good conference but probably has paled in compa in, by comparison with AL4. So I congratulate the, um, the organisers and of AL4, an excellent. But the papers uniformly through the AL series have been of very high quality and attracting great speakers from all over the world. So I think I would certainly be encouraging uh, libraries in Hong Kong to consider an AL5 at some point in time. Um, I'm unable really in the time available or with the energy available to me, let alone yourselves, to summarise all the papers. And so I'll just go through and pick out papers or themes out of papers which seem to me to relate to the theme of the conference. And so if I do not mention particular papers, it's not because they are of lesser quality, or that the papers I do mention, they are of greater quality. That is not the case. It's just um, what I am seeing in the papers. And through the, the process, and certainly at the end of the conference, I would like you to go away to think about things you don't think about. Because it's far too easy to leave a conference such as this, which has been stimulating, been exciting, and a lot of new ideas, and to forget about them next week. And so I would certainly be encouraging each of you, when you go back to your offices next week, um, or when you're travelling further distances, to set aside an hour or two just to reflect on what you have learned and to pick out the, the ideas that you want to consider in your own environments. And you'll probably come to this realisation if you haven't come to that realisation already. <laughs> so I had a look at the, the, the four themes of the conference and then tried to intersect with those themes uh, some ideas. And one of them is that looking at the, the, the papers and seeing whether those ideas are fit for purpose in your own library. And I think that's a, a good intersecting uh, criteria to consider. Perception is reality. It's something I've never been able to escape from. That we do not need to immediately put in place the reality of um, a change for the library, but to be very aware that what perception it creates out there does become the reality um, long before you get the reality of the particular program in place. And certainly with um, sustainability, I think that perception the perception of what the library is doing is critically important. And the final thing is really about future position and certainly looking at the kind of papers we have today. Many of them are positioning their own libraries, the, author, the libraries of the authors, uh, to a future position you know, as to where they want the library to be. And change, we've heard a lot about change as the only constant, but change really will happen very, very quickly. And so it's a matter of getting that in place. Looking at the papers, I think the, the first paper of the day by uh, Chani, Chani, I think was an ideal uh, keynotes, keynote paper. And in that it did 
really run across the, the gamut of issues relating to sustainability. But one idea that really did attract me was the regenerative uh, as a preferred thinking. And I think that really set the scene for the conference and it set a criteria or a measure by which all the other papers could be judged. And setting up communities of practice within the organisation or the community in which you are working. And so I think that paper, the keynote paper, was a very good choice and a very good delivery. Uh, the paper by Spotic. What, what attracted me in that particular paper was the emphasis on culture. You know, culture is critically important. I think you cannot impose a culture on an organisation. It has to be organic, it has to, be, it has to grow, and it has to take root in an organisation. So I think Ed was really correct in sort of highlighting the value and the importance of a culture. And, but a lot of work, no doubt, goes into the creation of such a culture. A number of other papers, excellent papers, were given there. And um, certainly, I, uh, being a, a farmer by um, choice of late, living on 20 acres, the idea of uh, composting very much appealed to me. So the paper by Jones and Wong on sus sustainability and target setting, for me, really set sustainability in the context of the organisation or the institution in which the library is and to remind us, really, that we do need you know, to set what we are doing in the, the context of what the institution wishes to do. And certainly, from another perspective, if we are to engage in some particular activity which the institution is not really ready to, to engage in, to try and do some work to, to bring the institution along. Because I think the emphasis on engaging in setting, you know, target setting and making sure that what the library was doing was in the context of what the institution wanted to do because you're adding value to that and also creating the perception and reality of what the library can add to the organisation. Um, I'm always amazed about the, um, the web materials and what, what needs to happen in that regard and the figures are just enormous. Um, the paper by Sorensen and uh, I've forgotten the other author, Sergeant, um, in to put on the page there. But I thought that was a very thoughtful and um, well thought through change management program. From another perspective, I thought this paper was excellent because it was the only paper which quoted a paper which uh, I had written with Ann Al <laughs> on um, scenario planning. So, you know, if any paper is going to get a good mark, this one would. So thank you. Um, I, I like the paper by Keeley and, and Ottomo um, because I think it, in a very practical sense it highlighted the, the conflicts between growth and sustainability. We heard this afternoon I think about um, the University of Melbourne losing 20, 27 positions I think it was. And so most libraries are really suffering in terms of the kind of resources and staffing levels and I think you know, Karen was really highlighting in that particular paper, you know, that you, there are different ways of solving a problem. And so engaging students and the very um, smart training program that they were put through um, was very effective, I think, in obviously meeting that need. And I think from another perspective, which perhaps wasn't highlighted as much, was the, the value of having students and the, the good messages and the good PR that they take outside the library after working in it. As you, and the, the paper by Meadow, I think, had two particular points. And I, I like the quip about um, moving from search to delivery. And I think we'd all agree that that is a very important um, development uh, to undertake. Uh, in order to make the library sustainable. But it also highlights for me that sustainability is not a static uh, activity. It, it's a constantly moving target. And the emphasis on collaboration, partnerships and relationships, you know, we, we should not forget that. And the, the papers which we'll come to in terms of the shared systems, they really do take into account that particular collaboration, 
consortia, partnerships, relationships. We are not islands anymore, and we certainly do need to work with other libraries and uh, uh, librarians and other organisations. But it's worthwhile emphasising, I think, that the management behaviours that you engage in in your own organisation will not be the same management behaviours that you engage in in a group working across librarians from other organisations. It requires quite different thinking, quite different behaviours, and um, it's worthwhile talking about that. Uh, the paper by Williamson, um, the academic library environment, and the creation of new library roles. And I think the, the emphasis which Vicky was giving in that paper on leadership uh, resonates for me all the time. Um, I'm engaged in a, a program of developing at Charles Sturt a Masters of Information Leadership. And, and we need leadership more and more. You know, and it should not be um, left uh, in abeyance, left untested. We need to engage with it. We need to really put it on the front burner. And so the paper which Vicky put together, I think, emphasises that and looks at the new skills that we want, apart from uh, the actual emphasis on leadership. Um, there are more good papers listed there. Um, and the shared systems, I won't talk about those per se. I think, um, I think it's... I reflect on that and, and wonder whether they would have happened, say, 10 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, I think a lot of these initiatives have certain times in which to be born and which to gain fruition. And I, I, I really applaud what those two papers are reflecting. The paper by Beasley and Rossell, um, learning, learning from other disciplines is something that's always stuck with me as being important. I guess we're, we are often uh, encouraged to do masters in librarianship or um, uh, more library qualifications per se. But I think in a lot of ways doing a qualification outside of libraries in allied disciplines is very, very important. I did my own masters in social psychology and it's always held me in good stead to be able to think about change and to think about people's attitude to change and to new developments. And that would never have come about through a library qualification. So I really applaud what they're saying there. Because as I go on to say, I think we are all in this room insiders. And as insiders, we all share the same jokes. We all share the same knowledge and understanding. We all know what AACR2 is, you know. But people outside don't know that. So we're insiders. But if we're going to be effective, with sustainability or any change, we need to become outsiders. And that will help. Um, the, pa the paper by um, Priestner, I, th I think, was excellent. Um, uh, great entertainment, but really solid value in there. And, um, and emphasising the user, you know, the, putting the user first and putting research first. Um, rather than just imagining what the user might want, what the user might need, what the user might use. It's not for us to decide that. And so I think a lot of the innovative measures of um, gauging that kind of activity were very, very welcome. There are a whole stack of papers there about particular services and um, programs which have been put in place, and they are all to be applauded. Uh, more sustainable services. And I'll just finish off with one by um, Schmore um, on strategies. And what struck me in this paper was value, sustaining value. Because organisations like libraries are, are not inexpensive, are they? They're hugely expensive. And certainly you would all know uh, administrators who look um, with a very um, envious eye on the resources which they put into the library. So sustaining value through listening and learning, I think, is a very, very good reminder at the end of a conference to engage in. Do not forget it. So I was just coming back to those three criteria running across the themes. And we've really had a conversation over the last two days, haven't we? We've, been, we've had a conversation led by a number of very 
of very good authors, I think, with all good ideas. And without going through that whole slide, I think the last point is that our conversation can only be validated by looking from or imagining an end point. And so where we have a good idea, it's good to imagine where that idea might end up. It may not end up there for another year, another two years, may never get there. But I think you can place some kind of value in that by looking out and looking backwards, um, which is really another way of getting to the future. And so I think at this late hour, sort of finishing, I've just got two points I'd like to make and for perhaps to try and round up what we might take away and what might be for the future. I've been reading a book by Jaron Lanier and uh, Who Owns the Future? And certainly I don't. But the, one of the points he's making is the fact that all of us are leaving digital trails everywhere we go. You know, we, we do email, we visit um, department stores. And I know I can go through a department store and because I have my mobile in my pocket, they know which desks I've been to. They know which racks of clothing I look at. And they collect all that data. And hopefully without in, impinging on my privacy. But those trails of data, Lanier talks about cashing that in because that will become the currency of the future. You know, the data and the information which we leave in those trails. If, if, um, if libraries are to be up there and to be understanding really what impact is happening with the, the digital um, persuasions we're going with, I think we need to engage in some pretty sophisticated research, big data you might call it, um, but to understand where, where those digital trails are going. We used to have library users and non-users, the people who came into the library and the ones who didn't. But the library business model, the traditional business model is dead, isn't it? And therefore we've now got another category of people who are library users, but they may not even know they're using the library because they use it digitally. And what, what, is the attitude, what are the attitudes of those people that, towards the content that they're using? They think it's coming across the internet free. And we need to understand where they are, what trail they're leading you know, through the resources that we have and the resources which we make available in other ways. So I think that access to big data is a message that is certainly um, I'm thinking about a lot. I'm not a Canadian, and, but there are some Canadians here, and they would probably know who this guy is, but I'm told that he was a great um, ice hockey player. And um, as such, he was, he was really above the pack. And um, if you can pardon the pun, puck and, the puck and the pack. Um, but playing with a very fast game, um, and he, he made a quotation saying, a good hockey player plays where the puck is. And we can all begin to understand that. Uh, I'd be a long way behind where the puck was. But he said, a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. And it, it's, you think about that and think about if we were to apply that to libraries, we need to, in a sustainable way, to mark out where the libraries ought to be. Not where they are now, because that, that's easy, but we've got to sit down and plan out where we think the library's going to be. To some extent, it's a gamble, isn't it? It's a, but there are tools for future forecasting which can enable you to, with some degree of reliability, and to be able to pick out where the library ought to be in no more than three years. You know, the people who do library strategic planning for 10 years, I greatly admire them because I guarantee they'll be wrong. You know, trying to plan beyond an horizon of three years, it's very, very difficult, almost, almost impossible. So I think libraries need to be where the puck ought to be and we ought to think about things we don't allow ourselves to think about. We don't allow ourselves to think about doing something because we haven't got the resources or we haven't got the staff or the sun hasn't risen in the right quarter today. 
we, we put far too many excuses in the way of allowing ourselves to think about what we haven't thought about. So that's really what I would like to leave you with. And um, I'd, again, I'd like to congratulate the organisers and uh, to say that on an excellent conference, and I, I'll give you two days off before you go back to work now in order to rest. <laughs> so, Sheshe um, Daja. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Please stay. May I now invite Ms. Diana Chen to present a souvenir to Mr. O'Connor. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> Looks beautiful. We can sit here for a while doing this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. O'Connor and Ms. Chen. Ms. Chen, please stay. We would now like to ask Ms. Dinah Chen to give her closing remarks. Ms. Chen, please. The conference has finally come to an end. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I thought some, somebody may say, oh, good, it's time to go home now. But I would rather think that most people would say, um, I'm glad. I, I have come because I learned something. And from your response, you're telling me that I have, you have learned a lot, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad. Um, I guess these two days have given us lots of opportunity to listen to inspiring talks and learn from our peers their best practices um, on this topic of sustainable academic libraries. I uh, have to admit that we have a very packed two-day schedule uh, back to back, and then I think for some for some people you may find it a bit too much. Uh, it's a bit uh, too hard to digest so many ideas and papers and presentation all at the same time. But don't worry, when you go away, you are carrying you know the uh, proceeding, the e proceeding in in this USB. And uh, when you return this uh, name back to us, remember to remove this so that you can keep it. And all the PowerPoint presentation will be uploaded uh, to our conference website so that um, not only reading the, the uh, full paper from the USB, but you know, look at the PowerPoint as well. Um, I uh, particularly like to thank uh, the keynote speakers, uh, Madeline, uh, Helen, John, and Andy. Um, and also I'd like to thank the presenters because you have put in a lot of time um, in preparing for your presentation, as well as writing your, your, um, your paper. Um, I'd like to thank the moderators for moderating all these sessions for us, uh, the sponsors, and also all the participants. And I especially like to thank Steve for reading all these papers for us and has given us an, an excellent summary, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. I will also beg you to um, um, accept our apologies um, if any of our arrangement do not meet your needs or requirement. Okay. Um, I, now, if you consider this conference as a, as a successful conference, it's because we have a secret weapon behind. We have a very powerful, very good um, organizing committee working for a whole year for this conference and also working almost like around the clock for the last two two or three weeks. So I would like the organizing committee from CUHK and also from HKUST to stand up to be recognized. So let's give them a big hand. So I'd like to give a uh, heartfelt appreciation to them. Um, they have been working for a whole year for this, and then they make sure that all the programming, publicity, promotion, uh, registration, um, catering, hospitality, website, logistic work perfectly. And then also to, to balance the book too, to balance the budget as well, okay? Yeah, now if you find this is a conference successful, you know, they are the one to claim the credit. If you, you are not happy with anything, they are not the one to be blamed. Okay. 
Now, lastly, um, I would like to thank the two students, Madeline Mann and also Anson Wong, for serving as our MCs. You thought that they are the fourth year student, but in fact, they are year one engineering student, both of them. They have done a superb job. So um, let's ask them to come forward, and I'm, we are going to give them a present as well. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Finally, Ms. Louis Jones would like to add her remarks. Ms. Jones, please. I, I'm going to be very brief, partly because I've, I'm losing my voice. Um, I've had such a wonderful two days uh, talking to everybody, discussing things, uh, making links with new people that I think are going to turn into sustainable partnerships. I absolutely echo what Diana has said in terms of thank yous to everybody and to the particularly to the organising committee. You have been an absolute joy to work with. Um, I've just listened to a presentation this afternoon that talked from, from Diana Seymour that talked about sustainable planning. Um, I'm clearly no good at this uh, because we don't yet have a date, time and place for the next AL5. But, <laughs> but it will be happening. Um, not, not immediately. <laughs> uh, we, we need a bit of a break. But I, I do invite you back to Hong Kong for AL, AL5 at some point in the future. And I do look forward to seeing people at CUHK tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. The conference is now coming to the end. Before you leave, please be reminded that to return your text to registration desk for recycling purpose. Also, to help us plan future conferences, we strongly encourage you all to spend a few minutes to fill in the evaluation form in the conference website. We value your opinion and your feedback is important for us to make further improvements. We hope you enjoy the programs and activities. It is our pleasure to be your MCs. There are buses available to MTR stations at Choi Hong, Chen Quen O, and Han Hao. Our colleagues will guide you. For those who would like to join the library tours now, please meet our tour guides at the library main entrance. Tours will start at 5.45. For those who have signed up for CUHK library tours tomorrow, please remember to arrive at 10.30. <coughs> Details such as shuttle bus arrangement can be found in the library tours column in, in the conference website. See you at the Academic Librarian 5 conference Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Good Goodbye.